Since that time, our response and notifications have moved with determined speed. We want to do this right. This incident hurts the environment. It harmed our reputation, caused into question the trust placed on us by our local communities. To be clear, I apologize for what has happened, and this department will put our full uh, sustained effort in repairing what has been done. When General Mastelier updated the community in February 6, he stated this effort would be guided by three basic principles. Promote openness and transparency throughout the process. Deliver a remediation plan consistent with legal requirements and sensitive to local and cultural imperatives. And earn public trust every single step of the way. I share my support for these values. They will guide both our local responses and the larger path forward for the Department of the Air Force. Our ongoing response to this fuel spill is a top priority. It's why I'm here today. Restoring the land and the trust will take deliberate, consistent action. We built a strong team that is drafting a reclamation plan that is in coordination with federal and state and local agencies and local community groups. This team does not work alone. Hawaiian Electric has helped us restore the lighting, lightning protection devices that are on the site and in addition, state environmental officials have been receptive and closely worked with us in our planning efforts as we begin the steps towards remediation. This team has accomplished a great deal in a short time, and it understands that their labors, labors will continue until we restore the land. We've already compiled important lessons regarding the generator site, which are being shared across the Department of the Air Force to prevent future incidents like this from occurring. While we have fallen short of our own expectations as stewards of this sacred place, I am fully optimistic we will be successful in remediating the entire uh, spill on the land and keeping our partners informed while restoring the trust with community partners that they deserve. At this time, I'd like to welcome Gerald Mastelier for some more detailed updates. Gerald Mastelier. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary, um, and thank you for leading this response effort from the very beginning. Uh, having you join us today here at the spill site to see firsthand what this amazing team behind us has been able to accomplish, uh, it's really important to everybody who has been working tirelessly to make this right. You, Mr. Secretary, you made this a personal priority and your unwavering support has greatly facilitated the spill investigation and the soil remediation. Now, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize the myriad stakeholders, multiple state and federal agencies, as well as the local advocacy groups who worked all day, every day, including weekends, including holidays, to develop and implement a, re a remediation plan that's appropriate for the sacred ground upon which we stand. Now, a lot has happened since I last addressed you from this podium. So let me fill you in real quickly on the few, few of the things that we've accomplished over the past few weeks. Given the cultural significance of Haleakala, we made an immediate priority to hire an on-site cultural monitor to bless the site and preside over meetings with key Hawaiian stakeholders throughout this process. As Secretary Kendall mentioned, that individual is Dane Maxwell, born and raised on the slopes of Haleakala and Pukalani. And he has been an integ integral part of what we're trying to accomplish, full remediation with the cultural sensitivity that is due for this location. Now, as our engineers and electricians meticulous reviewed hundreds of data points to better understand the unusual failure mode associated with the generator's float and transfer pump assembly, we took immediate steps to share those findings widely. And the, governor has asked six, the governor has asked us to go above and beyond. And so, at Secretary Kendall's direction, we have already begun to mobilize teams to conduct on-site inspections of generators at military installations across the state of Hawaii. 
Now, as of February 14th, we have contracted with Tanista Services in Honolulu to excavate the contaminated soil around the generator. And throughout this process, we have been working closely with the Hawaii Department of Health, Environmental Protection Agency, Region 9, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy, the Hawaii State Historic Preservation Division, and the Hawaii Department Land and Natural Resources Office of C Conservation and Coastal Lands. And of course, Along the way, our cultural advisor, Dane Maxwell, helped ensure that this project would not only meet the expectations of our regulators, but would meet the expectations of this local community. Now, concurrent with the work of our subject matter experts, I and other members of the leadership team have spent countless hours meeting with the community, listening, trying to better understand what it is we need to know about this area. And at the same time, sharing all the information that we have when it becomes available. Now we met with a group of about 60 student leaders at Kamehameha Schools, Maui. And we met with members of the DKIST Native Hawaiian Working Group. And we've even had meetings with lineal descendants of King Kamehameha himself. And these meetings are important because we're cultivating relationships and rebuilding trust. First by listening and then by answering their questions directly and honestly with full transparency. Now we've been asked many questions about the spill, but we've also been asked about the important mission that's conducted here at the Maui Space Surveillance Complex and how the telescopes atop Haleakala are used to constantly track and monitor activity in the space domain, protecting our nation's most critical assets. It is a mission that greatly contributes to the defense of the Pacific region, and it is one of which all Hawaiians can be proud. Finally, with the help and advice of Dane Maxwell, we are exploring recurring community meetings to continue to answer any questions residents may have as we walk through this remediation process. Working with all of you is of the utmost importance, and we will continue to provide updates via the U.S. Pacific Air Force's website as we enter the next phase of remediation. Finally, I want to personally thank Governor Josh Green and Mayor Richard Bisson for their commitment to both guide our efforts and hold us accountable. Their teams have promoted openness and transparency and have been true neighbors and teammates throughout this process. In the military, we have a saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So when it comes, up, when it comes to the cleanup of this sacred land, the best way to move fast is to slow down and make sure you do the job right. And we will do that with the people standing behind me today. Now, from the beginning, my number one priority was to deliver a remediation plan consistent with legal requirements and sensitive to local and cultural imperatives. There's still much work to be done, but I'm immensely proud of the work that we've accomplished to this point. With that, we're ready to take your questions. Mahalo. Excavation is going to start as soon as we have an, a work plan that's approved by all of the stakeholders that I outlined earlier. And we've been working very closely with the Department of the Health. Department of Health. Um, they are currently reviewing the work plan, and I expect to get word back either today or tomorrow. At that point, we are ready to begin excavation. Secretary Kendall, uh, having traveled thousands of miles from Washington, D.C., this is obviously an important issue to you. Uh, and then having spent the day uh, here in the community, uh, on the site and on the mountain, uh, what are you taking away from today? Well, first of all, I, I, I can't uh, say enough how gracious the people I've uh, been interacting with have been. The, uh, 
the Department of the Air Force is very embarrassed by the fact that this has occurred, and we're working as as General Malsier, Messler indicated to clean it up and make it right as quickly as possible. But it's still it's still something very regrettable and, and very embarrassing. And under the circumstances, I think the reception I've had has just been been outstanding. Uh, great cooperation. I think we've worked uh, very hard to work with local groups, local state and local government. Uh, but their response has been uh, better than I could have expected, and I'm deeply grateful for that. So <clears throat> currently the Space Force has six generators operating in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we have thoroughly checked out all six of those generators to make sure that they were operating in compliance and that we don't see any issues similar to what we have found here at Haleakala. Secretary Kendall has mentioned that earlier today you were able to uh, meet with the mayor. Uh, during that time, what were you able to discuss with him? Uh, we went over the way we responded. Uh, I think consulting with the mayor immediately was very valuable to us. Uh, he gave us some very good advice on how to proceed and how to interact with the community. I think that's, that's paid off. Uh, I was able to give him my personal assurance that we were going to be on top of this and we we're going to do everything we can. Uh, as General Mel, Mel Sear indicated, we're going to go as quickly as we can, but that means doing it right and taking our time to make sure it is right. And he was appreciative of that. Uh, it's a great partnership, and I'm very grateful again for his willingness to work with us to help us get through this as best as we possibly can.